think, you know, the people who are really hard are, you know, the, the people in chemistry departments and physics departments, because they often can't even base their system around a, you know, commercially supplied components. They have to machine everything in the machine shop all by themselves. Yeah. And those are the guys that it takes them sometimes up to three years to build an instrument. And um, with my PhD, I built a set of optical tweezers. And that, I was my PhD advisor's first graduate student, and it took me three years to get start getting data. So in his case, as a young assistant professor, it took him three years. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the tour. So it's built on a Zeiss, around a Zeiss microscope chassis, inverted microscope chassis. The reason I pick Zeiss is because I really think they have the very best turf objective lens. Um, it's, the, it's that very nice objective lens that I showed you. Um, I'm going to have two um, cameras. One is going to be attached to that um, beam splitting device that I showed you. And so that, that camera will be dedicated to doing simultaneous imaging of red and green fluorophores. Mm -hmm. Then the second camera will be available for doing um, blue emitting fluorophores, far red emitting fluorophores, and then full screen, um, full camera chip applications with red and green fluorophores where time I don't need to do the, the high time resolution simultaneous imaging. Um, these are my lasers. They're these small diet pump solid state lasers. They're very small now. I mean, they're practically a laser pointer. And um, this one is um, green. It's 561 nanometers. This one is blue at um, 491. And um, they will eventually be coupled into fiber optic cables and then the fiber optic cables will launch the lasers into the back of the microscope. And these are the two that will be allowed, that will be available for um, simultaneous imaging of two single molecule species. Because in, in there's the filter set that I, I was able to get a filter set that will allow both the 491 and the 561 laser to be reflected up towards the objective for turf, back down, and both the emission of a GFP and let's say an M cherry or a RFP fluorophore to come down to the beam splitting device to the camera at the same time. So that's the that's the fanciest experiment. And um, yeah, other than that, it's computers for controlling it all. You know, it's all computer controlled now. The crazy thing is, it's nice. You know, they've got this LCD screen now that you can press buttons to switch filter cubes and, you know, adjust your camera pores and stuff like this. And this guy actually can come off the microscope and set on a little independent base module, which has its own um, motorized focus adjusting knob. At first I was very skeptical about this because I thought, ah, this is just bells and whistles and stuff like that. But I decided I'm going to buy it because then I can take the um, the joystick that moves the stage and the focus adjusting and microscope control unit and I can set them both directly in front of the computer screen where you're getting the image from the camera and so the user will be able to sit here, student will be able to sit here and fully adjust everything while directly watching um, video come in on the computer screen because it's, it's almost it almost never happens anymore that you actually use the eyepieces to adjust because your eyes just aren't as sensitive as the camera is, and so you're a lot of times you're squinting to see something which, if you just put it on the computer, you can see very clearly. And so, um, so you know, the, the eyepieces are almost there just to make it look like a microscope because if it if it didn't have eyepieces, it wouldn't look like a microscope, would it?